joins us. Coach, it's Dave, it's Jason. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, I'm glad, glad I could. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, very kind of a sad time, you know, no question that uh, Coach Carrill and I know with, uh, as you pointed out, I mean, with his, he and Jeff uh, Petrie's relationship was uh, just amazingly close for a lot of a lot of reasons, a lot of good reasons, and uh, so a real loss uh, to all of us, but especially to Jeff. Yeah, but Jerry, you had a obviously a relationship with Coachy. Um, what did Pete Carroll mean to you? Well, he, I, I would say, you know, first of all, he, you know, the term basketball genius is really overworked, but in his case, it, it's really true. I really felt that, uh, you know, that he was an ac- absolute uh, genius in, in the field. Uh, uh, I've always said, you know, that you look at what he did at Princeton as a coach. Uh, you could put Bobby Knight, uh, Mike Krzyzewski, Dean Smith, Roy Williams, whoever at Princeton, they could not have done better uh, and probably not as well. You know, I mean, it, it's like I, I don't care what anybody says. There's nobody could have accomplished more uh, at Princeton University than did Coach Pete Carrell. I mean, he was just simply, uh, you know, kind of ahead of his time in, in a lot of ways. And and so, you know, the number one that does come to mind, the, the basketball genius. Now, selfishly, I, I, I was going to say I really had a, a lot of time we 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 went on our daily walks on the road in particular and and you know just uh gosh what a remarkable life he lived and, and certainly it, he it, he did you know just the full he got the full 92 years and mm-hmm. bless his heart but but i mean the stories uh, you know how he got to where he was and 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 we you know we just kind of spent a lot of time together going over a lot of stuff not you know in basketball certainly king stuff uh, uh, particularly but uh you know i always just thought that uh his eye for the game was just remarkable i know doug christie could probably fill you in a little bit on that as well but uh you know i'd Certainly thought I understood the game a little bit, and but we'd we'd talk about things, and he'd always bring up things I hadn't thought about, you know. And then, uh, oh, we always had a little game. I gotta tell you, we'd we're, we're walking and telling stories, and we both had our list of stories, you know. And and when when we're repeating ourselves, uh, which <laughs> old people do, you're supposed to hold up two fingers if you've heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> and and I told, and of course we'd be holding up two fingers quite often, uh, but a lot of times I told Coach, uh, he said, "Well, you've heard this before," and you know, I said, "Yeah, but it was so good I didn't want to hold up two <laughs> fingers, and I wanted to hear it again." And uh, you know, I mean, he, it, you know, to me, and you know, he was just a, a special man, coach, and a, and friend, and uh, you know, there really had a lot to do with the uh, success of the Kings, you know, and I mean, uh, really great player development. And I think his offensive, uh, you know, wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I thought uh, Rick Adelman, obviously a great coach, did a marvelous job of utilizing and changing, actually, you know, changing Pete's system to fit, fit uh, the Kings and the NBA, which, of course, due to the shot clock, uh, you really had to speed things up to be successful, which, of course, Rick was uh, able to do, and Pete understood. But I, I thought, uh, you know, it was just a – but, you know, Jeff and, and Rick and Pete and, and everything at that time was uh, just, you know, just uh, an amazing coming together type type thing. Jerry Reynolds joining us. Uh our, uh, my guy, Jay Mars said in my ear while you were talking, Jerry, he's going to use the two fingers thing on me from now on, which means I'm going to be seeing a piece. Sorry, I have that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, well, I say, you know, it, 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 it worked. And, you know, like I say, with, uh, with coach and well, myself too, you know, he had to use the two fingers on me several times as well. <laughs> coach, how did a, uh, short shuffling, uh, East Coast, Ivy League uh, elderly man, how did he come into the NBA with its dunking and its passing behind the back flash and showtime and young millionaires who are, uh, you know, they, they don't need to be told anything. They're, they're, you know, they're NBA players. How does this 
How does this old man transition from Princeton to the NBA and and not just you know do an adequate job, do a wonderful job, and affect like we were talking about Doug Christie, Jason and I were during the break. So many of these players so deeply. How does he pull that off? Well, you know, I, I said it's simpler than you might think. He really knew what he's talking about. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, that's the thing I, I would say with players. Uh, you know, if you can give them information that's accurate and helps them, uh, they'll, you know, they'll they'll pay attention. They, they they might fight it at first, but but once once they realize you're 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 helping them, you're actually helping them with good information. Uh, and then plus the the thing about coaching that a lot of times people didn't understand. He he might look like your your grandpa. Hmm. But I guarantee you, he'd tell you where the uh, bear craps, <laughs> and uh, you know there'd, there'd be no there'd be no nonsense. I mean, he wasn't going to take any guff from anybody, and, and I've always said, you know, that that was the thing too. He, he was straightforward. He'd he'd give you a little information you didn't want to hear, but you were going to hear it. And and I think some of the, you know, quite honestly, I guess I am old school like Coachy too. Is that some so too many of the guys don't hear enough of that because they, they get their butts kissed and padded uh, for since they're 14 years old and told how great they are and, you know, this or that. And some of them really aren't that great, really need need to make changes and improvements. You know, that's the reality of it uh, in any profession. Uh, Jerry, obviously you knew of his track record at Princeton. I mean, everybody knew him as, as the coach there. Did you have a relationship with him back to college or it was the first time you really got to know him and form that relationship was, was when he came here? Yeah, my, my first relationship was when he came here, you know, once he uh, had left Princeton. So, you know, certainly I was well aware of who he was and his background. So, so you know, that part was established. And so it was it was easy for me to, you know, to, to, to want to get to know him and things. And, and you know, and I mean, just uh, right away, you know, Pete, I was, I was telling a story the other day <laughs> that uh, I always remember the first day he came to work. And we was at a summer league, and he had just joined, and this practice was basically over when he showed up. And and typical of Kochi, which I, I came to understand later, he grabbed Corliss Williamson, who was a rookie at that time, and uh, he went down to got him, got him and took him down and worked him another hour and a half, <laughs> you know, on footwork and different things, you know. And I said, whoa, it's this is a little different here. And I, I remember talking to, to, to Corliss afterwards, which uh, you guys know is one of the special people to ever play for the Kings and, uh, uh, or coach for the Kings. And, and I asked him, I said, well, how'd it go? He said, man, I was tired and he worked my butt off. But boy, he, he really knows this stuff. I said, no kidding. Okay. And uh, so, you know, but it was, that's who he was. I mean, you talk about a basketball junkie. I mean, that was his life. Uh, you know, he, he might not know that he's supposed to change oil in his car, but he knew <laughs> the right pivot mood. <laughs> Jerry Rebels joining us. You know, Coach, um, obviously family, friends, uh, all of that, that when you talk legacy, that comes number one. But but I am curious in today's NBA, we, you, we talked earlier about the – the trails, the, the, the pieces of, of coach's offense and, and things that he instituted that you still see in today's NBA game. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious if you would agree that his legacy when it comes to how some of these offenses are run, especially will, will live on for quite a while. Oh, absolutely. You know, certainly uh, I think in the college game, they're, they're getting back more and more to some of some of the, uh, the the philosophies and styles. I mean, obviously you you can't do exactly the Princeton offense because when it was at its most effective, they really needed the, and used the thirty five second clock. But uh, but I, I think in the NBA, you know, certainly the Kings themselves with the you know they were the basically through through coaches' philosophy. I mean, opening up the basket, getting the getting the low post guys out of there so you can have back cuts and uh, drives to the basket you know uh, certainly before that i mean everybody plopped the center down there with his back to the basket and clogged up the basket and to where the cutters had nowhere to go uh 
So, you know, but you see that with the, with the Warriors on a different level. They, I mean, they don't use two, two centers or two, uh, high post people, but they'll use basically one or, or sometimes, uh, five out, you know, basically a five man offense, which, uh, you know, which is what the Kings did during those years, which was rare at that time because, uh, the game had really resulted in the basically isolation basketball or, or drop it in to the center and draw double teams and kick it out and, and play out of that. And of course, some of the teams are doing that again now, which is as boring as crap, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I mean, uh, the, you see the Warriors playing the five man game and, and I, I think, uh, you know that that's a real tribute to to Coach Gorill because I think that's what players like to play that way, and people like to watch it. Uh, at least people like me do. Well, I think you speak for uh, a lot, if not all, of us, Coach. Coach, we uh, I know the last time you came on was shortly after uh, the great Bill Russell passed, and now Coach Carrill. Uh, I I appreciate you coming on uh, after these these bittersweet things happen, and, but I do look forward to talking to you just about basketball here as the season comes up. We found out October nineteenth we got our first game versus Portland, and uh, I can't wait to pick your brain. I know I speak for Jason mm-hmm. Ross too when uh, when the Kings start playing basketball for real. Well, you know, any time there's not a lot left to pick, but you can <laughs> pick away. And now I want to remind you if. If I pass, I can't come on. That's a great so, point. That's not happening, Jerry. That's yeah. it's never okay. going to happen. I'm passing before you do, Jerry. This <laughs> okay. I can't take that. Okay. All right. All right. So no, it's a, but really a you know just a I can't express enough. You know what a delightful, a special, special man and coach, uh, coach he was, and uh, you know we had a lot of a lot of good times, a lot of good times, and. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the greatest thing, though, is, you know, he lived 92 and he lived every one of them. Yeah, that's and, and that's what we all would like to do. It's incredibly well said, as usual. Coach, love you. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jerry. Talk to you soon. All right, Thanks, bye. guys. Uh, bye.